brothers and sisters after the powerful days of holy thursday and good friday knowing how to pray on holy saturday can feel a bit uncertain easter has not yet arrived and yet the intensity of praying with the passion has passed although surely there are practical things to do in order to get ready for easter clothes to press a meal to prepare skipping over holy saturday never feels quite right at the same time how to proceed prayerfully can be unclear until the easter vigil there is no mass to attend although we can pray it is an in between time of waiting on holy saturday we can imagine what mary john and the others who had stood faithfully at the cross experienced i often imagine mary as exhausted and yet comforted she had just experienced and witnessed the torture and death of her son i look at our blessed mother and remember all that she went through all that she endured and i find myself a little bit calmer a little bit more at peace our sufferings and sorrows are nothing compared at what she must have been feeling when she was raising her son our lord jesus christ indeed we have to learn so much from mother mary here's what i have learned about how a lady of sorrows can guide us especially as parents and as a family and those who are suffering the first sword that pierced mother mary was the prophecy of simeon from this sorrow we learn how to abandon our family to god's care as soon as the blessed mother heard the prophetic words spoken by simeon in the temple during jesus's presentation her heart was pierced with a sword the first sword was the haunting message in that prophecy that would never leave her she knew her son would suffer terrible agony that he was destined to die each of us my dear friends carries a particular cross not just our own but that of our families of our children too we aren't given knowledge about each child's future we can't predict future drug addictions or atheism when our babies smile and coo and toddle around in fact those things are so far from our minds but as they grow up and encounter real life they become tainted by shame rejection betrayal and their own sin a lady of sorrows teaches us that like her we can abandon our families our children to god's loving providence every day instead of trying to control the outcome of their choices or worrying the root of such parental hovering is fear mary was not afraid of what jesus or she would have to suffer in the second sword that pierced mother mary the flight into egypt we learn from this sorrow to be obedient obedience to our vocation especially as a parent there is a seed of rebellion in each one of us it's easier to do things our own way even as a parent because we think we know best 
and while we are certainly given the grace and authority over our children to discern on how to raise them for eternity we don't always listen to god mary obeyed saint joseph's odd request to flee egypt without question or hesitation can we say the same of us when our children exhibit defiance disobedience hang around questionable friends and become detached from prayer the third sorrow the sword that pierced mary was the loss of child jesus in the temple at this sorrow we learn to trust god when our child is lost any parent can imagine the panic that happens when you lose your child when you take them to a mall or even in the neighborhood that panic or fear sets in even before we can muster a prayer what happens when our children get older and are not literally lost but perhaps lost to the family maybe they become estranged maybe they choose a lifestyle contrary to their moral upbringing they flounder in their faith they do not attend mass they use recreational drugs or curse freely how do we respond when our children are spiritual wayfarers we trust as mary did that they will be found again she didn't give up searching for her son until she found him and her example teaches us relentlessly to pray for and encourage our children to become to come back to god in the fourth sorrow that the sword that pierced mother mary was the meeting of her son jesus on the way to the cross at this sorrow we learn fortitude fortitude to face the challenges of parenthood there is no guidebook or a manual that can prepare a parent for every possible scenario of challenges they will face every day we parents face a plethora of questions and decisions there are usually no easy answers sometimes we want to give up especially if we receive news no one wants to hear perhaps devastating diagnosis or the development of a mental illness but mary teaches us to carry on with courage to persevere in the face of seasons that seem not terminable to keep reaching back to god for help when we are desperate at the fourth sword that pierced the heart of mary was the crucifixion and death of jesus at this sorrow we learn fidelity to god even when we lose our child the ultimate devastation happens when a parent outlives his or her child i've known many parents who have lost children to miscarriage stillbirth or death in infancy drunk driving accidents overdoses suicide is it possible to remain faithful to god when we are so angry at the loss of our children when we do not know if their souls were saved at the time of death perhaps there is no greater loss but mary knows the loss she walked the journey of calvary alongside her son and observed every torment and torture he endured she felt it too as every parent does 
when their children suffer yet she didn't waver in her faith she likely felt broken even annihilated from the inside out as we often do but she continued to turn to god with her tears we too can do the same at the sixth sword that pierced the heart of mary was when the body of jesus was taken down from the cross at this sorrow we learn sacrificing ourselves for the sake of our child's soul as mary held the limp body of her son with all its torn flesh exposed bone and bruises what must she have felt when our children suffer we do too sometimes it's physical suffering in the form of bruises during toddlerhood broken bones in schools and sports related injuries sometimes it's childhood cancer cerebral palsy multiple sclerosis down syndrome autism heroin addictions depressions the struggles we cannot bear to imagine mary became reality we feel helpless and hopeless at times what can we do mary reminds us that we can offer up our own interior brokenness and our fear for our children to god as prayer for their salvation we can do little things each day or fast and pray if the situation warrants something greater but we have authority to claim our children for god the seventh sorrow or the sword that pierced jesus was the burial of jesus at this sorrow we can be hopeful hope when our child is gone i've been close to losing hope many times since becoming a mother it's painful to watch my children suffer their different crosses i once heard that every child is born with a job to do a burden to carry and a gift to share we all want our children to be talented smart athletic physically attractive friendly courteous but what happens when they are not instead of wishing that our children would be happy and successful we can remember from our lady's example of watching and waiting at the struggling children at the empty tomb that god has so much more in store for us as parents and to our children if we turn to her especially in destructions in desperate times we will carry the torch of hope inside our hearts as we wait to our blessed mother a lady of sorrows gives us great example of what it means to be a christian a follower of jesus today we learn to sit with mary with the mother of jesus and let us hear the psalmist say to us be still and know that i am god let god find us in the stillness the tomb you and i must let god enter is the tomb of our heart we need and desire that god wants to bind our wounds and anoint our bodies god is the one who comes to you today may we learn from mary's example today and always